Welcome to module 6 of this course. While previous modules have focused on the fundamental basics of machine learning, this module is one out of three modules that focuses on a specific algorithm class. In this module, we will talk mostly about algorithms in the unsupervised learning setting. To be more precise, you will learn about different clustering algorithms as well as dimensionality reduction methods. To start things off, what do we mean with clustering? The term clustering, or cluster analysis, refers to the unsupervised machine learning task of grouping similar data points together. This means that data points in the same cluster will be more similar to each other than data points in different clusters. Clustering is commonly also used as an exploratory step in data analysis. It is helpful to extract useful information from unlabeled data and finding out whether any particular structure exists in our dataset. But we're not here to talk about data analysis, are we? Let's kick it off by introducing one of the most popular clustering algorithms, k-means. Let's consider a simple example. You can see a set of data points in two-dimensional space. Even though the points are not labeled, you may notice that our data points can be roughly divided into three groups. In other words, we can already identify three individual clusters from a visual perspective. Visualizing data using scatter plots is by the way a common preliminary step in cluster analysis, since it's a simple method to assess clustering tendency and decide whether to proceed with a clustering technique or go with another algorithm. But, by the looks of our dataset, we expect that our dataset contains distinct clusters. K-means will now help us to find those clusters, which might not be the same as the visual clusters. The K in K-means is one of the algorithm's hyperparameters and defines how many clusters we want to form in our dataset. So, as for our example, we would set the parameter k to 3. As already mentioned, for clustering we need a notion of similarity between points to make sure that similar points end up being part of the same cluster. In k-means, we simply use the Euclidean distance to measure the distance between points. More specifically, with k-means the goal is to build clusters to minimize the variance within each of them. But how do we measure variance? Firstly, we need to identify a center point of our cluster. This center point is also called a centroid. For now, we will just randomly put one and explain more on that later. Considering our center point, we can now calculate the variance as the sum of the squared distances between each individual data point and the center point. With this concept of a center point and the variance, you might already have an idea of why the algorithm is called k-means. K refers to the number of clusters, and means refers to the fact that we measure the variance of each cluster with respect to the mean of its points. Since we have k different clusters, we will just sum up all k variances and try to minimize this sum as part of our objective function. Now, to move on, how do we obtain our set of clusters in practice? As it turns out, finding the very best cluster configuration that minimizes our sum of variances is a computationally difficult problem. However, we can efficiently obtain a solution by making use of an iterative approach. Unfortunately though, this does not guarantee finding the best possible solution. But let's look at how the iterative approach works. We start by choosing some initial mean values, which can be done by picking three data points at random. We also color each of the mean points differently to show that they represent different clusters. Now we assign each data point to the closest mean point and color them accordingly. And voila, we have our first clustering. Although not the best one as we can clearly see. So how do we fix that? Now that we have our clusters assigned, we can now recompute the center points for each cluster. As the center point have now changed, we can now reassign the data points again to see if something has changed. We continue by recomputing center points, assigning new clusters, recomputing center points, assigning new clusters, recomputing, well, does this ever stop? In fact, we need to define a stopping criteria. Otherwise, we will just loop forever. Some of the possible options for stopping criteria are the following. The center points of newly formed clusters do not change, which leaves us with very stable clusters. Or data points remain in the same clusters, meaning the assignment does not change anymore. Or we just set a maximum number of iterations and stop after that. Now to sum up what k-means does. First, we pick k data points at random to act as center points for our k clusters. Remember, in this example, we use 3 as a value for k. 
After this, we assign each data point to its closest center point. We then recompute the center points to minimize the variance of each cluster. After this, we reassign the data points by assigning them to the closest new center point. We check if our stopping criteria is met. If not, we continue with step recomputing center points. If the criteria is met, we are done and our clustering algorithm is trained. There are some important points to mention, however. Obviously, the performance of the algorithm is highly dependent on the number of clusters that we defined. As we cannot always know how many clusters we want to form, we will have to try different values for k to see what achieves the best results. Also, as we are picking the initial center points randomly, it is also a good idea to run the algorithm multiple times for the same number of clusters to check for optimal solutions and robustness. And with this, you have now learned about the most important parts of the k-mean clustering algorithm. See you in the next video.